So here you go, Val, this is for you. Cheers, God bless. To Val. We're now going to introduce a, a lady, a very special lady called Valerie Nibbs. Uh, Valerie uh, joined the Filey team in 1959, ladies and gentlemen, at the age of 17, and uh, and that was having lied about her age. Now we got the measure of you. Uh, uh, she uh, she did a winter's uh, she did a winter at the ocean uh, at Salt Dean in Brighton. I did a Christmas there at eighty yeah eighty three Christmas and New Year, and uh, my window was uh, was uh, stuck open. Uh, it, you couldn't close the window. Uh, freezing cold, winter winds coming in the whole time. That was my miserable Christmas and New Year. Nobody did anything about it. I just thought I'd bring it up now and see if anybody. <laughs> Nobody cares. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like many others, uh, she met her husband, Mike. What, did many others meet your husband, Mike? Uh, it, a, he was a drummer with the Fred Percival Band. Uh, you can see that I've rehearsed this all morning. Uh, in the, and that was in the Regency Ballroom. Uh, she has two daughters, five grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Uh, so, to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the new Butlins book, uh, will you please welcome Valerie Nibbs. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you everyone. Well, when I was asked um, by Tony if I'd talk about uh, Wish You Were Here, I started writing copious notes and then realised after five minutes that it would end up another book. So they went out the window, so this is from the heart. Two years ago, uh, an author by the name of Neil Hansen uh, contacted me and uh, six other red girl redcoats, and he wanted to write a book about the loves lives of female butlin redcoats. Well, I can tell you, we didn't tell him all the truth. Uh, we kept some secrets to ourselves. He only asked me three questions. And after that, I was like an express train going backwards in time, not stopping at any stations. As all the memories came back, all those years, the smells, I'm sure you know them well, the tin soldiers, all the beautiful colours, but the happiness and the smiles that we all had during those days. Billy Butlin was way before his time. Next year, it's an 80th anniversary. And back in the 50s and 60s, he held 12,000 campers in camps all over the UK. And if you think of that as an industry, all those many years ago, that was indeed a wonderful fate. We worked from eight in the morning till midnight. And after midnight, that was when we played. <laughs> and I'm sure that's why they're laughing, because the memories come back. At Filey, there was a young-faced man that I'm sure you all know, Alan Ridgway, who went on to become the Ridge and a manager to many of you. Of course, we were a family and we were a close-knit family. The winters and the hotels were very, very different. Having left a team of 60 redcoats at Filey, there was only 12 of us um, at the ocean. Among them, Dave Butler, who's sadly not with us, Jimmy Tarbuck, Rocky Mason, and the lovely Ron Stanway. And my partner in crime who's here today, Hilary Keenan. We got up. We were like naughty children. And our manager, who was lovely and very calm and very quiet, was Brett Creswell. Never, ever, ever did he lose his temper, except for one occasion. And I'm afraid Hillary and I were the brunt of that. It was the 60s and Coronation Street had just started. And we used to go into the television room, sit on the floor, and say to the guests, if somebody comes in, we're not here. And we'd sit there for 30 minutes enthralled. Unfortunately, the weeks to come put pay to that. 
because we were on light, lighting duty for the shows. There were no technicians in those days. We used to have to stand on a ledge at the back of the ballroom and put the acetates in and do the spots ourselves. Well, we were furious. However, I came up with what I thought was a very, very good plan. Children were not allowed under 12. So right, we thought, get two big boys, take them through it two or three times, put them on the ledge, tell them what colors to put in. We could go and watch Coronation Street. This went on for weeks and we were thrilled to bits. One evening, Brett Creswell came in, not the calm manager, as you all know. Valerie, Hillary, I know you're in here. Get yourselves into the ballroom. As we went in the, sculpt into the ballroom, everyone was in hysterics, except the artist that had come from London. The boys were playing attack guns on the ceiling. <laughs> and that's just one of the many, many stories. Someone quoted on Amazon as the review that the seven stories were very, very similar. But of course they're similar because we all went through the same thing. And as Martin rightly said, it wasn't just the Redcoats. We were fortunate because we were in the forefront. There were chalet maids, there was the restaurants, there were so many people, bars and staff. And of course we mustn't forget those dreadful, dreaded men in blue security. <laughs> I can see one or two of the boys blushing. We were a family, we stuck together, and it proves it because of the reunions and the reunions such as today. We learnt our trade, and that is certainly showing today with what has been put on by Tony, Bob, and all the other members of the team. It's people like Scotty Dotty and everyone else that take the time and the trouble to bring us all together. It, thank you, Dotty. It is a marvellous and was a marvellous organisation and one that will never be forgotten. And next year, on the 80th anniversary, I want you all to feel rightly proud because you have taken part in history that will never, ever forgotten. And for one more time, I know you know the words. Heidi High! Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, uh, Valerie Nibbs, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Chicken George, <laughs> I've seen too many people do Michael Bublé songs. Oh. And you're not really very good. Oh. I've seen better people. So no, you have not got oh. my vote. 